Hello and welcome to Part 14 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, we're going to be talking about the art of animation, which is of course the art of making things move over a sequence of time. Now, it's important to know that people go to animation school for a long time to learn how to make objects and characters move in a realistic and believable way. Everything from, uh, let's say, a ball bouncing to making objects look like they're moving in the wind or falling with gravity, all the way up until making characters look like they are acting, like they have motivation and they can show emotions. It takes a long time to practice and learn how to do well, but luckily actually creating motion in Blender is very easy. Let's go ahead and get started by clicking on the splash screen. And earlier in this video series, when I set up Blender, I actually got rid of one of the windows that we need in Blender's user interface that we need for animation. We're going to make it again, so I'm going to grab this little cross-hatched area and divide this window in two by dragging it down on it with my mouse. And we're going to make this very narrow little window into a timeline window. So what I'm going to do is click on this little change window button and I'm going to change it to a timeline. So what a timeline is, and if you've ever used any video editing software or any other animation software, you'll know what a, a timeline is. It's a visual representation of movement or keyframes over a sequence of time. So right now our timeline is 250 frames long and by default in Blender, if you look under the camera tab in your properties window, the default frame rate is 24 FPS, which means frames per second, which is the standard uh, traditional uh, film frame rate in movie theaters and in old film cameras. If you want to change it, you can. 29.97 um, is the frame rate of North American and TSE TV, but 24 frames per second looks really good for animation. We need one more window in our user interface. So I'm going to grab this little cross-hatched area again and drag down on it. And this next window um, above the timeline is going to be a dope sheet. Now a dope sheet is a term used in traditional animation. It's very similar to a timeline, but a dope sheet kind of gives you a bigger view, a bigger kind of scope of what's going on in your whole animation. Just like the timeline, it shows you a sequence of frames, but by default, it shows you a much longer sequence all the way up until frame 1500. And by default, Blender's timeline is only 250 frames long. There are a few technical differences as well. We'll get into the, to that, but we should have two to start animation. Uh, right now, I'm on frame one of my animation. How do I know that? Well, this green bar, same thing with this one. This one actually says one, but down here at the bottom of our timeline, we can see that we're at frame one. This is the current frame indicator. If I grab this green bar in either of the windows, you can see that it slides along so we can go to different points in time. To actually make animation happen, what we have to do is turn on this red record button, which means automatic keyframe insertion. So let's go ahead and go to our front orthographic view in our 3D viewport, and I'm going to turn the animation button on. But now we have to decide where an object is going to be, but more importantly, what time that location is going to be. So I'm going to go back to frame one and I know in my head that I want the cube to be right about here at frame one. So I have to go to frame one and then with the record button turned on, I'll tap G and move the cube there. And as soon as I tap to let it go, you're going to see a few things happen in my dope sheet and my timeline. So I'm going to click. What happened is that we made a keyframe because this automatic keyframe insertion button is turned on, whenever we move or rotate or scale any object in our 3D viewport um, around, it makes a keyframe. It tells that object to be at that location or at that rotation or at that scale at this point in time. But we need two keyframes to make animation. So I'm going to go one frame later. I'm going to go to frame 24 and I, I can actually type down here in my current frame indicator a number and press enter. So now we're at frame 24. I'm actually going to zoom in on the dope sheet so it kind of resembles the same length as the timeline right about there. And we're going to move the cube to the other side. Again, I have this record button turned on. So when I let go, it's going to make a keyframe here and here as well. These are really the same thing. And please don't get confused that you actually see four here. This cube, you can collapse it. That's the name of this cube. Go figure. It only has two keyframes and this top bar is a summary of all the keyframes of all the objects in the scene. So we have two keyframes. So we have animation. Let's go back 
using our VCR buttons down here. And let's press go back to the beginning, and now we'll press play, and it plays the animation. Now what it actually did is it did all the in-between frames for us, because this is keyframe animation, or keyframe based animation, which means we don't have to do every single uh, part in between. Blender is very good at doing the in-betweens for us, so we don't have to. Um, but right now if I press play, it's going to loop through the entire 250 frames of our timeline. So what I can do is I can change this end value. Right now it's 250. We can change it down to, let's say, 50 and press enter. And likewise, you can make the animation longer if you need more time. If your animation has more keyframes than this, uh, you, of course, you can make it any length that you like. But I'll go ahead and press play. And so the animation ends, and then it loops back to the beginning once it gets down to 50. And I'm going to zoom in here by scrolling up on my mouse or scrolling down, depending on what kind of mouse you have. And there we go. If you watch this over and over and over again, you'll notice that the cube is not moving at a constant rate. You'll notice that it actually speeds up at the beginning and slows down at the end. And that's because of the interpolation of these two frames. Interpolation basically means the curvature uh, if you look at the movement on a graph of time versus location, uh, which is actually what our graph editor window does, which we'll look at in a minute, um, you'll see that the interpolation is not linear, it's uh, curved, in other words, Bezier. If you're familiar with any vector drawing tools like Bezier curves, that, that's what this is. Uh, let's go ahead and make our cube jump though. So I'm going to go halfway in between to frame 12. And I'm going to make my cube go up in the air. And because we still have this red record button turned on, it made a keyframe. Before we watch it, though, i got to warn you, you need to turn this red record button off unless you actually need to do animation. What happens is a lot of beginners leave this on, and then they do things like adjust the lights or add more lights or move things around in their scene, not intending to animate them. But then things start acting very strange. When you save and reopen the file, things might snap back to their old location. Um, weird things just happen. Please always make sure that you only have keyframes on the object that you intend to have. If you don't want a keyframe on something, of course you can select keyframes in the dope sheet. That's one of the technical benefits of having this dope sheet uh, on your screen. And you can delete with the X or delete key on your keyboard and you can get rid of keyframes that way. So let's go ahead and watch this animation. So I'll go back to the beginning and press play and we have our jumping animation. But you know what? I think I want a different speed. Let's say I want this uh, jumping animation to happen quicker than it currently is, or maybe in slow motion. Well, what I can do is I can actually select keyframes in this dope sheet window and move them so I can you know, have one selected by right-clicking on it, and I can tap G. So now the second part of this animation takes a lot longer. It's very slow, but I'm gonna undo that. But we can also scale an animation as well. If I select these keyframes with box select, in other words, I tap B on my keyboard and select those keyframes, I can scale them. Now what I'm going to do is put my cursor, my, my playhead, in other words, uh, right over the first frame. And now I can tap S and that will scale the animation to make it bigger or make it smaller. Again, that's with the S key to scale. If I make this longer, it takes more time and therefore it's a slower animation. So now if I press play, the cube moves a lot slower, and it's only actually going to frame 50, which is only halfway through. If I likewise press pause and scale the animation down, notice how it's scaling towards the playhead, which is why it's a good idea to put your playhead right at the beginning so you can scale towards it, or towards the end, you can scale it that way as well. I'll scale towards the beginning, make my animation very quick, let's say right there, and press play, and it happens a lot quicker, so I hope you understand that. Let's talk about interpolation, but before we do that, let's talk about inserting keyframes manually. I'm actually going to delete this whole animation, so with everything selected with the A key, I'll press X to delete and click on delete. If you do not want to use this red record button, let's say you don't have a timeline up, you probably should, but let's say that you have the cube already in its starting position and you just want to say, hey, I want to keep this cube there, but I want to make a keyframe of the cube in this location at this time. Well, what you can do is, if you want to do it the kind of sloppy way, you can turn on the record button, and you can just kind of jiggle the cube. And when you move it up and down, 
It recognizes that and makes a keyframe. The better way to do that though is to have the cube selected and tap I on your keyboard. The I key brings up your insert keyframe menu and you can select different kinds of keyframes. Now the default kind when you have your record button turned on is it inserts a keyframe for location, rotation, and scale. Those are the three things you can animate with. So if I only insert a location keyframe and then I go, let's say again, to frame 24 and I move or I, without the record button turned on, I move the cube. It didn't insert a keyframe because I don't have the record button turned on, but what I'll do is I'll tap I and I'll insert just another location keyframe. The animation will still play, but it only recorded the fact that you know, its location moved. If I scaled this cube on just this keyframe, it won't scale to be small and then big because this keyframe's data only included its location information. So if you want to animate location and size and rotation over time, you need to use low road scale. So I'm going to go back to this keyframe and insert a loc rote location location scale keyframe and now I can scale the cube down let's make it really tiny like that and I'm gonna go to this keyframe over here and let's go ahead and move it up now I made a mistake there I actually did insert a, a scale keyframe right here so um, it's it is gonna grow whoops what happened there I'm gonna go scale put it on the ground and tap I, low quote scale. So now it should know that this frame is that size and let's scale it up on this frame and tap I and insert a low quote scale keyframe. In fact, let's move it up and insert that keyframe again. And now it should grow from small to big. There we go. Um, I'm gonna make my cube jump and do a flip in midair. So what I'm gonna do is go halfway in between move it up in the air, maybe make it do a rotation. And there we go. And I'm going to tap I to actually insert that keyframe. We'll use a low crow scale. And so now it actually does kind of a flip and then it reverses back. And that happened because this keyframe, this third keyframe had rotation data. We rotated it basically 360 degrees from point A to point B. And then it rotated back to the way it was. So it, it rotated back the other direction uh, for this one. So what I could do here, if I want to rotate this cube 300 or actually two times 360, um, I could go to this keyframe and then in my properties panel, you can see under transform, and by the way, that panel is the end key, the rotation at this keyframe is basically 360. So I want to keep going on and make it uh, spin at a constant rate. So I'm going to type in here, and that's the green axis that it's spinning on, which is Y. I'm going to type 2, and I think you can do this a star for time, so that's Shift 8, 360. Aha, uh -huh, that's 720. I wasn't ready to do that in my head. And so now I'll tap I to insert that location rotation scale keyframe, and now we have a cube spinning animation. The last thing I want to do is stop this cube from speeding up and slowing down. So I'm going to drag this little cross hatched area. I'll get rid of that window and I'll divide the window in two. We're going to turn this side window into a graph editor. That's what I was talking about earlier with Bezier curves. Oh my gosh, look at this. Because we have the cube selected, we can see all the lines of direction. Again, on the bottom is keyframes over time and this is distance traveled up and down. So you can see that on the x-axis, this red line, the cube does the most movement. It moves from here on the x red axis over to here over time. But you can see because it's sticking, um, not moving a lot at the in its beginning section, um, it's not moving a lot distance-wise, especially in this first little section here, but it's moving a lot more over time, that means it's not it's slow in that time and then it speeds up over time when it gets steeper. So what I can do is I can right click on any of these little uh, orange handles and I can right click to drag them around and these, these are Bezier curves. 
If I want to change the interpolation of any or all of these points, and this does take some practice, uh, I'm not perfect at it by any means, I tend to just do my animation visually, um, what you can do is select a point and then go down to key and change the interpolation mode, which is the T key, again key interpolation mode, which is just the T key as well, and here are the three types of interpolation, constant, linear, and bezier. The only one I want to talk about is linear. By default, all keyframes are bezier. If I change this keyframe to linear, it goes from a straight line or into a straight line, and therefore the cube will no longer start slow and start speeding up. It'll just go at a constant rate, which is what you might want. There we go. The end frame still does slow down towards it, so what I'm going to do is go to the uh, this keyframe and then change with the T key my interpolation to linear. And it does not do both sides sometimes. Uh, I'm not entirely sure my understanding of, of uh, interpolation modes is not that great. But I can just right click on this little Bezier handle and drag it and make it about straight right there. Click. There we go. So now if I play it back, hopefully it's a little bit more linear over time. There we go. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. And again, the warning is. Turn this record button off if you're not meaning to animate. I'll see you next time.